Well, good morning, everybody, from uh, wherever you're watching or listening to the service at St. Saviour's for the fifth Sunday of Easter. This is how we always start our service, with acknowledgement of birthdays and special occasions. And so we celebrate the birthday of Emmanuel Waldin, celebrating his birthday. We celebrate a couple of anniversaries, Karen Waldin, 28 years of ordination, right today too, right on the day. Wow. And Joyce Breckman, her 10th anniversary of joining St. Saviour's Parish. <laughs> and so we sing the blessing. <coughs> May the blessing of the Lord be upon you. We bless you in the name of the Lord. May the blessing of the Lord be upon you. We bless you in the name of the Lord. Our opening hymn is 482, Come and Journey with the Savior. with the 
gathering of the community. As we gather ourselves, our thoughts, and focus on the supreme mystery that is God, we look all around us at the great cosmos, observe the wonders of the sky, the beauty of nature, and listen as it sings. This, this earth, earth, our home, is, is diverse and, and wonderful and, and constantly changing. Sometimes the wonders of nature sound harsh, especially when the winds howl and animals roar, and yet, despite the predatory and destructive nature, we listen and hear the harmony. Rebirth, Rebirth is constant, constant refreshing, and, and gives vibrancy to the earth. earth. Within the rebirth, there is a promise that new life will proceed. And here we find that we, we are received, accepted so that dreams can grow, and, and we feel surrounded by awe that is God sharing the sacred dream. So gathering as we do in our sacred places, we pause again to reflect, to feel, and to commit to thoughtful and mindful intention. We wonder again about the ebb and flow of this living, breathing, expanding universe and of this community. And we give our attention right now to each other, to new beginnings, to this time, and to the season. Please sit for the proclamation of the word. Our first reading this morning is from the Acts of the Apostles. Then an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go towards the south, to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the cave, <coughs> queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, do you understand what you are reading? He replied, how can I, <coughs> unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb, silent before its shearer. So he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, about whom, may I ask you, does the prophet say this, about himself or about someone else? Then Philip began to speak, and starting with this scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water. And the eunuch said, look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more, and went on his way, rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azotus, <coughs> and as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns, until he came to Caesarea. Listen for the leading of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. <coughs> The refrain for our psalm this morning is, All the ends of the earth shall turn to the Lord. For God does not despise nor abhor the poor in their poverty, neither turns away from them. When they cry to the Lord, they are heard. All the ends of the earth shall turn to the Lord. My praise is of God in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the presence of those who worship the Lord. The poor shall eat and be satisfied, and those who seek the Lord shall give praise. May your heart live forever. 
All the ends of the earth shall turn to the Lord. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations shall bow before God. So our sovereignty belongs to the Lord, who rules over all the nations. All the ends of the earth shall turn to the Lord. To God alone, all who sleep in the earth bow down in worship. All who go down to the dust fall before God. My soul shall live for God. My descendants shall serve God. They shall be known as the Lord's forever. All, All the ends of the earth, earth shall turn to the Lord. We continue in worship with him. 445, God the Creator. A reading from the first letter of John. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only Son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son as the Savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in God. So we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this way, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, 
and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God, and hate their brothers or sisters are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this. Those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. Listen for the leading of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. Our gradual hymn is 514, Jesus' Joy of Our Desire. St. John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. A few years ago, we found ourselves in southern France, which is very much a wine country. And while we were taken about, taken back by the beauty of wine growing everywhere, 
as well as the grapes and everything else, we decided to go and take a tour of a winery to see how all of this is done. On a lighter note, I wanted to make sure that people do not stomp on grapes when they start putting it in and, and are doing it in a different way. But I remember two distinct people who we met while we were going through that winery. One was the taster. And our guide told us that he or she is the most important person in any establishment because they are the ones who taste and their palate and their tongue, everything else tells what the taste is and what has to be added or decreased as the batch grows. And the second one, we were told, is the one who goes and takes care of the vines to make sure that the soil is just good, to make sure that all the minerals which soil needs are there, to test the plants, to check everything out, to ensure that it will bring forth fruit. Now that area is a very interesting area of France because it has very small farmers who have made cooperatives in different parts. So they pool their resources, bring it together, and make wine, and of course sell it around and to the world wherever it can go. While thinking about this passage, I started to think about that field which Jesus also saw in his own life. That how a plant is tender, how it has to be nourished, and the first fruit which is after five to ten years is used for young wine, as they said, which they told us is found in boxes. When we buy boxes, it is a young wine. But it continues to be pruned. It is it, it is continued to be fed to make sure that the beauty of God's creation reaches to the people in the best possible manner. When Jesus is talking about this parable or this analogy, he was telling his disciples something which was very important. Because they had to understand what is the relationship of God with Jesus. And there were concerns at John's time as they were starting to equate the two. And as several times in John's Gospel, Jesus sets the dragon straight and says, the Father and I are one, still Father has more knowledge or is the Supreme who has sent me into the world. The Father is the one who knows the time when I will come back. The Father is the one in this case where Jesus says, who takes care of the vine. He is the one who tends. He is the one who makes sure that the plant is right. And then Jesus moves on to say, but that he is the vine. And all of his disciples, he looked at them and he said, your branches which take your strength, your courage, your, your growth, your mineral, your power, your faith from me. And as you grow, those which will not bring much fruit, either they are burnt or they are pruned. Burnt would be that if they continue to walk away, continue to, to, to stop growing, then they will be set aside. Now that's an important point because common wisdom will tell us or knowledge that burning away or cutting away means that they will be thrown away from the grace of God. What it really means is God will look at them and will say that even though you are not bringing fruit, you can be set aside. I really think basically if we go to John's letter where Jesus talk, John talks about love, that it does not mean that they will be discarded for the rest of their lives. But those which bring fruit will be pruned, will be nourished, will be encouraged to bring more fruit. And that's how the, the life of Jesus' disciples with him will grow. Now when we think about what is the wine in this world, we know that the body of Christ, as he told us, 
that the church is the body of Christ and he is the head of the church. If I go back to where I started that we can think about several cooperatives or several small farms which are different churches in different parts of the world, in different parts of the city, belonging to different denominations. But they all have, all of us have the same root or the same wine, which is the Jesus Christ himself. And all of us are branches called to do our best. And all of us are nourished and sustained and taken care of by God himself. He is the vine grower. He is the one who comes and makes sure that the vine, which is his son, his body, his son's body, here on the earth, is in good health, is doing its best. But the vine and the root and the soil by itself cannot do anything until the branches are responding to it. Until the branches, which are you and I, disciples in Jesus' time, every other person in this city and the world who professes to follow Jesus, until they decide to bring forth fruit. If we do not bring fruit, we will be cast aside. We will not leave the vine, maybe we will be cut off and there will be things which will happen. But we are called to bring forth fruit. And Jesus said this, that my Father will be glorified if you will bear much fruit. So what is the fruit of all of this? What is the fruit of, of this vine to which we belong? I think John's letter addresses that question in very simple yet difficult way where the author of John's letter writes to the church and says, it is very simple. Your life in God, through Jesus, is rooted in love. And it is rooted in love because God first loved all of us. God loved us by creating us, by redeeming us through His own Son, by calling us into communion with Him through our baptism, and through that love, God expects us to love the other person. And it goes further that how can one say that he or she loves God if they cannot be in right relationship or love their brother or sister? Now there's a difference, isn't it? Because whenever we think about love, we think about, okay, we have to be just... Um, I don't know, lovey-dovey, just holding hands and not saying anything, smiling and other things. And we cannot say no to anyone. But there's a difference between loving and liking, and there's also a difference between tough love and other things. So when we think about love as God has loved us, we have to think about how we can reach out to one another. How we can uphold one another how we can nourish and sustain one another. And going back to that analogy, how we can share the gift which comes from the soils, from the vine, to with the other branches. How through the, our encouragement, the other person can grow in our own midst. Can come to realize that God has first loved them before anything else. These are very difficult times, as uh, if you follow the news, you'll realize that India is seeing massive, massive cases every day. 400,000 people yesterday. And the deaths which are happening. In the midst of it, I heard some ludicrous statement where a person said that it's punishment to India because of the things they have done in different parts. It is punishment because they were, they were wayward and punishment from God. And perhaps that is the way that person can justify that tragedy or that pandemic to himself or herself. But our response in these times 
is the response by prayer which is to be vulnerable and open and to beseech and to plead to God's love and also by supporting those who are affected by it and that is important to remember because the country in which we live has people from different parts of the world and those who are of Indian origin or the other parts of the world which are ravaged by this pandemic they are in our midst they are the ones who need to be loved they are the ones who need to be cared for to be told that in that struggle common struggle of humanity we can trust God through Jesus to bring us faith and hope that things everything will work out at the end that we will be stronger that we will know that God's mercy exceeds and supersedes anything which can affect us and I think in these difficult times as we hear about our own province our country it's very interesting I did not realize that all provinces except Alberta are closed so nobody can even drive through those provinces if you do not have a primary residence in that province you cannot cross the provincial borders so we're very much living in isolation to protect ourselves from this pandemic but in these very difficult trying vulnerable stressful and depressing time Jesus is telling us that he is the one <coughs> He is saying that his father is the one who tends the, to the soil. He is saying that we are the branches. And St. John is remembering Jesus telling them that the love which God has shown us is the love which we can show to our fellow brothers and sisters, which will be deemed the fruit we can bring to the world, to the other person. So their pain, their suffering is not alleviated is maybe lessened but for sure that they know that there are people who care for them who work with them who walk with them to do the best they can to bring comfort hope and 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 love in this in these difficult times so think about it and pray about it pray for all those who are afflicted by it by every disease by every calamity by destruction accidents and otherwise to think about the enormous responsibility which is entrusted to all of us and to think about enormous gift which we all receive that we do not do it on our own but we do it because Jesus and God themselves are helping us supporting us nourishing us and growing us helping us to grow in love for one another and to also pray for ourselves that whenever we find ourselves in those dark moments overwhelmed by what stays around and lurks around us that we will be comforted by knowing that in spite of where we are and who we are God himself is around us protecting us giving us strength to move on to help one another and to know for sure that regardless of where we are what we are doing what we are dealing with God is with us strengthening us and at times struggling with us but for sure loving us as his beloved child as his beloved creation I am the vine you are the branches Jesus said and my father is the vine grower the most comforting words we can hear and believe at this time and in every time of our lives in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen, amen. amen. in response to the world let us affirm our faith we believe, we believe in God, God who when there was nothing 
planted the seeds of life in all creation, green in the desert, blossoms in the trees, and bread in the clay of human life. We believe in Jesus Christ, eternal seed of life, who entered the depths of our existence, trod deeply into our earthiness, took into his body all our painfulness, and lifted it into the victory of love. We believe in the Holy Spirit, who waters our grief with tears, nourishes us in the buds of life, and tenderly cherishes our growings, until they break forth into the fruits of hope and faith. Amen. So this is a time in our service where if we were in a normal activity, which uh, over a year later sometimes allows us to forget, this is when uh, our ushers would take the offering plates, come through the congregation and gather your financial offerings and place them on the altar. Now of course we can't do that, but the reminder is that we can still present our monetary offerings either in, by mail or through the slot in our door. And the other thing that we're reminded, which I've been just talking about a little bit, is that uh, offering is more than just our monetary resources. It's offering our time and our talents. And during a pandemic, it might be as simple as us making a phone call to somebody we know and love, or even to somebody that we know or suspect might be struggling. And so we sing our offertory hymn. Jesus, Jesus, fill us with your love. Uh, 
assume your comfortable position for prayer. In our intercessory prayer today, we give thanks for all the blessings of this life, families, friends, colleagues, neighbors, and strangers who nurture us so that the love of God may grow within us. Thank you for your love, your world, like a seed may grow to produce in us good fruit. May your love be like a seed, taking root and growing strong. For the leaders of the nation, provinces, cities and towns, that they may lead with strong hearts and gentle hands and generous spirit with compassion and mercy, with wisdom and grace. May they reflect your will, guiding all your actions and decisions. May your love be like a seed, taking root and growing strong. For those who serve in this harm's way, those who live in dangerous places, those who live in areas of war and strife, those who live in fear, those who worry about employment, bills, food, and struggle, just to find dignity in life. May your grace bring peace and safety to all people, one to another. May your may love, love be like a seed, taking root and growing strong. For those who suffer from all kinds of illness or disease, of mind, body, or spirit. At this time, we pray for John and Eleanor, Reverend Ted and his family, Sylvia and her family, Phil and Louise, Sarah, Doreen, Beverly and her family, Juanita, Bradley, and Blair. Restore those and all those who carry in our hearts to fulfill the help that only you, O oh God, can bring. May your mercy shower over each of us with healing mercy and love. May your love be like a seed, taking root and growing strong. For those who are dying and for those who have died, and send your comfort in love. Give solace to those who mourn, console those who grieve. May your grace surround us like a mantle upon our heads, a shawl upon our shoulders, a hand to hold our hands. May your love be like a seed, taking root and growing strong. Amen. We say the colic at this time. Almighty, Almighty God, God, your Son, Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, is the way, the truth, and the life. Give us grace to love one another, and walk in the way of his commandments, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior has taught us, we are born to save. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And the, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn is 612, The Healer of Our Every Ill. Welcome. 
with Kendra and then you can bring them over to the church and you'll find them in the auction somewhere <laughs> down the road. And so now as we leave our gathering and time of celebration, may we remember that each day offers more things than we can do. So let us go now as those who would see not only what the world is, but what we can make it to be. And may our hands, our hearts, our voices be turned towards making it so. We go, we in, go peace. in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.